There are secrets buried not in the earth, but in the deepest, most unforgiving blue. For centuries, humanity has clung desperately to the land, building towering cities on solid ground, often oblivious to the rising tides that now threaten to erase them from the map. But what if the solution wasn't to fight the water, but to embrace it? What if the next great civilization wasn't built on concrete and steel, but on a vast engineered archipelago designed to float forever? This is the story of Pangeos, a concept so audacious, so unbelievable, that it feels more like science fiction than reality. Yet, it has been drawn on paper, rendered in 3D, and presented to the world as a glimpse into a future where entire nations may one day drift across the seas. The year is 2022, and humanity finds itself trapped between crises. Climate change is no longer a distant threat, it's a present nightmare. Rising seas swallow coastlines, storms grow fiercer, and overpopulation pushes cities to the brink. Amid this anxiety, an Italian design studio named Lazzarini, known for wild, futuristic naval projects, unveiled a creation that seemed to merge myth and engineering. They called it Pangeos, a terriot, so massive that it redefined the meaning of the word ship. Its name pays homage to Pangaea, the supercontinent that once united the Earth's land masses, symbolizing a new global unity not tied to geography. But Pangos is not just a vessel, it's a floating city, a mobile nation, and perhaps the boldest architectural idea humanity has ever seen. From above, the design takes the form of a colossal sea turtle, its central shell forming the main body of the city, and two giant wings extending outward for stability. But this isn't just a stylistic choice. The turtle shape is both symbolic, representing endurance and longevity, and functional, giving the platform balance against waves. At its maximum size, Pangios would measure 1,800 feet long and 2,000 feet wide, a floating world larger than most modern stadiums, nearly double the size of Rome's Colosseum. To put it in perspective, the world's biggest cruise ships would look like toys beside it. This is not a boat, it is a monument to ambition, a portable continent. And what would life look like inside this floating marvel? The concept drawings reveal an entire metropolis on water. Within its multi-level shell, there would be luxury hotels, shopping districts, green parks and even beach clubs. A central plaza, open to the sky, would be surrounded by villas, apartments and palatial residences designed for the wealthiest citizens. The designers even propose an airport runway and a port for aircraft, making the city completely self-sufficient. It's less of a cruise and more of a permanent migration into a new form of existence. Residents wouldn't just visit Pangeo, they would live in it as citizens of a new floating nation. Of course, a city this size demands unimaginable engineering. How could it stay afloat in the open sea? Lazzarini's solution was bold. A hull divided into nine massive sections built from countless steel blocks, providing both buoyancy and structural strength. Its draft, the portion beneath the water, would sink nearly 100 feet deep, anchoring stability even in rough waves. For propulsion, the city would rely on nine high-temperature superconducting engines, each capable of producing over 16,000 horsepower. But these engines aren't fueled by oil or coal, they're entirely electric. Energy would come from multiple sources, rooftop solar panels, onboard storage, and most intriguingly, the wings themselves, which could harvest the kinetic energy of ocean waves. Pangeo, if ever built, would glide across the seas with near zero emissions, a floating utopia powered by nature itself. But to construct such a marvel requires something equally unprecedented, a shipyard bigger than anything on Earth. The designers propose building a special Terra shipyard, a giant dam-like structure 
spanning 650 metres by 600 metres. Only such a space could assemble the Pangios before flooding the basin to let it sail into the open sea. And where could such a mega project happen? The answer seems obvious, Saudi Arabia. The kingdom has already embarked on massive futuristic projects like NEOM's The Line and The Mukab, pushing the boundaries of modern engineering. For a nation eager to diversify its economy and stamp its mark on history, hosting the birth of Pangios would be a perfect fit. The estimated cost? A staggering £6.8 billion, a sum enormous but not impossible for a nation already pouring hundreds of billions into visionary infrastructure. Yet, as extraordinary as Pangios sounds, it is not the only floating city project reshaping our future. Around the same time, another vision began rising. Not in computer renders, but in real water. The Maldives' floating city is a direct response to one of climate change's most urgent threats. The Maldives, a nation of breathtaking coral islands, is also one of the lowest-lying countries in the world. For decades, scientists warned it might disappear beneath the sea. Faced with this terrifying possibility, the Maldivian government partnered with a Dutch company, Dutch Docklands, to design a floating solution. Not for billionaires, but for ordinary citizens. Unlike the single colossal form of Pangios, the Maldives' floating city is modular, a collection of thousands of floating platforms tethered together in a lagoon near the capital, Malé. The layout resembles the branching organic structure of coral reefs, a fitting tribute to the very ecosystem that sustains the islands. Over 5,000 housing units will be built, along with schools, shops and restaurants. Cars won't exist here, only bicycles and electric buggies. Canals will replace streets, and artificial coral banks beneath the city will encourage marine life while acting as natural barriers against waves. This isn't luxury, it's survival. For the Maldives, floating cities aren't futuristic fantasies, they are lifelines. The construction process is equally fascinating. Each unit is built in a nearby shipyard, then floated into the lagoon and connected into hexagonal clusters, slowly forming an entire community. Developers hope to finish the project within just a few years, offering housing that is both affordable and climate resilient. While it lacks the extravagance of Pangios, the Maldives floating city carries something even more powerful, hope. It proves that floating cities can serve not just the elite, but entire nations. But there's a third project, one that takes the concept global. In 2022, the United Nations, in partnership with the city of Busan, South Korea, and the New York-based company Oceanix, unveiled Oceanix Busan, the world's first prototype of a scalable floating community. Designed by the famous architectural firm Big Bjarke Ingels Group, this project is less spectacle and more blueprint. The city will begin with three interconnected platforms housing 12,000 people, but can expand to over 20 platforms as needed. Each platform is dedicated to a purpose, living, research or lodging. Together they form a self-sufficient ecosystem powered entirely by solar panels, supported by closed-loop water recycling, urban farming and zero-waste systems. Oceanix Busan is not a luxury dream, but a practical model meant to be copied by other coastal cities facing sea level rise. The history of floating city experiments, however, is filled with both bold attempts and spectacular failures. The idea of seasteading, creating permanent offshore communities in international waters, has floated around for decades. Organisations like the Seasteading Institute even attempted to establish pilot projects in French Polynesia, but political resistance and logistical nightmares crushed the vision. Other attempts like the MS Satoshi, a cruise ship repurposed as a floating residence in Panama, collapsed due to insurance problems and financial instability. 
These failures showed how difficult it is to turn dreams of floating civilizations into reality. Not and yet, with projects like Pangeos, Maldives and Oceanix, the concept has matured. What was once fringe science fiction is now recognised as a serious urban solution. So where does that leave Pangeos? As of today, it exists mainly as a concept, a digital rendering backed by crowdfunding through virtual NFT sales. Investors can buy virtual real estate inside Pangeos, with the promise that one day those digital assets may translate into real-world ownership. It's a modern, futuristic way of financing, but also a reminder that Pangeos is still far from reality. Unlike the Maldives floating city or Oceaniex Busan, it remains an idea, a vision hovering between art and possibility. But its very existence has sparked a global debate. If rising seas threaten to erase nations, could new nations be born on the water? That's the deeper mystery here. Floating cities are not just engineering marvels. They force us to question the future of civilization itself. What does it mean to belong to a country if countries themselves drift on the sea? Who governs a mobile city that isn't tied to land? Could we one day see a passport stamped with Pangeos or Oceanix? In the age of climate migration, floating nations may become both refuge and frontier. For now, the vision remains unfinished. Pangeos is a dream. The Maldives project is underway. Oceanix Busan is preparing to break water. Together, they are the first wave of a new era of architecture, where cities no longer fight the ocean, but rise with it. If they succeed, the sea once feared as humanity's greatest enemy, may become our last sanctuary. And when that day comes, future generations may look back on projects like these, not as outlandish fantasies, but as the moment humanity learned to build new worlds on water. If you found yourself fascinated by this incredible journey into the future of civilization, know that this is only the beginning. The world is full of mysteries, technological, historical and natural that are waiting to be uncovered. And in the next story, we'll dive even deeper. Don't miss it. Like, share and subscribe because the tides of the future are already rising.